All right, Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. Okay, this is going to be probably the most interesting part of the teaching. Here we go. So what is John going to write? Write the things which thou hast seen. Okay, I'm going to have to erase this. All right. Let's erase this part over here. I'm going to try to retain this picture because this is all referring to the same thing. Okay, here we go. So John has to write the things that thou hast seen, right? And the things which what? Are? And the things which shall be what? Hereafter. Now, Schofield and Larkin and class, classical dispensationalists, what they say is this. They say that this is, uh, has seen is referring to ch Revelation chapter uh, 1. Why? Because John saw... Notice right here that John, what did he see? He see at chapter 1, verse 12... I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. See that? So then chapter 1 is all about the seven golden candlesticks passage, right? Where he sees Jesus and the seven golden candlesticks. So that's chapter 1. The things which are, they claim, is chapters 2 through 3. Why? Because what you're going to notice is that in chapter 2, verse 1, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say it. See that present tense? So things, remember, things which are, right? So that seems to make sense. So it's referring to the churches here. And this is referring to Jesus in his resurrected a majestic state. Hereafter would be the entire line of the tribulation, chapter 4 through 22. This seems to make a lot of sense, especially when you look at chapter 4 and verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, the door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as if were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So that's what it seems to show. Now, that's possible. I'll be open to the possibility of this. Now, there's a different dispensationalist. His name is Ruckman, and he gave a different point of view, which is extremely interesting here. So what's very interesting is that Dr. Ruckman points out that the things which are, uh, excuse me, the things which thou hast seen is the church age. And then he says that the things which are is the tribulation. And then he says the things which shall be hereafter is the millennium. And how he does this is that, he, so then, we know chapter 4, that's the starting point of the tribulation, right? So then what Dr. Upman will do is that chapters 1 through 3 is the church age. Because notice chapter 2, chapter 3, it talks about the church of Ephesus, the church of Smyrna, etc., etc., and then he put the things which are, because that's tribulation, he'll put that as chapter 4 through 20. And what's after the timeline of the tribulation is obviously millennium, right? So he puts that chapter 20 through 22. So this can go 4 through 19 or 4 through 20, either or. I think it's 4 through 19 is more accurate. Let's do that. Okay, why does Dr. Upman do this? This is extremely interesting. Because when John is writing, he's already pushed forward. So we know that John, okay, when John was writing the book of Revelation, he's here, right, with us at the church age, writing at the tribulation. But what God did was he pushed him forward to the timeline of the tribulation. You already know now because of this drawing. Look at verse 10. When John's writing this, it says what? I was what? In the spirit of when? On the Lord's day. Now, I'm not going to say it again, but remember, the Lord's day, we covered in our last video, was the tribulation. Ah, so if John is in the tribulation timeline, 
What's, be, what's before him? What's in the past tense for him? The church age. What's the future for him? That's millennium. This seems to be supported because it is true that, that according to Schofield and Larkin, the things he saw was the seven golden candlesticks. But who are the seven golden candlesticks right here? It's the seven churches. See, that's what's interesting. Because uh, look what God said at Revelation 1.19. Write the things which thou hast seen, right? So we're saying that this is referring to uh, the church chapter 1 through 3, the seven churches. Look at verse 20. Look at verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. See what John saw, see what he already saw was those seven golden candlesticks, what he saw, and seven stars. Keep reading. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest, see, past tense, which thou hast seen, are the seven, what, churches, see? So that's why we can put this right here. So it seems to make a lot of sense that what he already saw, has seen, is referring to the seven churches. So if we put it that way, then chapter 2, chapter 3, when we talk about these seven churches over here, this is already back at the past right here, what you saw at the past. The only thing, though, what makes me open to Schofield and Larkin is because the term things which shall be hereafter. Chapter 4 and 1 was pretty plain on that. Come up hither, I'll show you things which are hereafter. So it's like God already told you what things will be hereafter. And he said that at chapter 4, all the way through 22. And chapter 1, it mentions a lot about has seen, has seen. But then chapter 2 and 3 is like present tense, things which are, things you saw, see? So that's the only reason why that Schofield and Larkin I'm very open to. It really seems to show that. But you can't ignore the other points right here that Ruckman discovered as well. So this is open to what, what you want to see it, but this is very interesting where you can see different perspectives in the scriptures, and it's up to you now where you're going to have to look it up yourself, and the Lord will show you. One thing you're going to learn is that as we cover more and more deep in doctrine, you're not going to know everything. That is very important to understand. So why, why does God do that? Because of 1 Corinthians 13. He says, now I know in part and I prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Face to face I will know, 1 Corinthians 13. You'll not know every doctrine in the Bible. Why? Because God wants you to keep studying. This book is literally an endless treasure. Amen. It'll never stop. Mm -hmm. All righty. So write the things which thou hast seen, things which are things which shall be hereafter. And then let's close it for today at verse 20. I've got to wrap this up. The mystery of the seven stars. Okay, now God's, God will tell you what they are. Oh, I can't take the word literally as it says. It's so strange. Let the Bible interpret itself. Amen. The mystery, oh, this mystery, I can't understand revelation. Well, look what Jesus said. Of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. So these seven stars that he's been holding in his right hand are what? And the seven golden candlesticks, remember these seven golden candlesticks? What are they? The seven stars are the what? Angels of the seven churches. So now you know what the seven stars are. Angels of seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So those are the seven churches. What's very interesting is when you start off at chapter 2 verse 1, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. So these seven stars are simultaneous in line with the seven candlesticks, which each candlestick. There's an angel or a star over a church. It's kind of like uh, God gave it physically where the star of Bethlehem was over a location. And it's the same thing right here. We see a star over a location. And that seems to be very possible in the Bible, that sometimes that angels can appear as stars uh, over a location to represent something. That's why uh, angels is not more accurately termed as messenger, it's more accurately termed as representative. That's what Dr. Upman believed in. Because an angel is representing something. 
But what's so interesting is that he's, these angels are seven what? Stars. That matches with the book of Job. When the morning stars and the sons of God shouted for joy. So these morning stars and sons of God are referring to angels. That's important to understand. Some, some people teach that the sons of God are referring to a godly line of Seth and that the, uh, the line of Cain is ref, uh, referring to uh, the sons of man. Well, that's nice and pretty, but that's totally wrong. So, you know why? Because the book of Job said morning stars and sons of God shouted for joy. And you look at Revelation 1 verse 20, the stars are referring to the angels. The sons of God are referring to the angels. Especially if you look at Job chapter 1, the sons of God are representing themselves before God Almighty at his throne. See, these are referring to angelic celestial beings, not just normal humans. All right, we're going to have fun at uh, chapter 2 and onward. We're going to have some fun over here.